Dow, Kreinheider, Gellerson, Werenberg. These are names, Valpo names. Names that span generations. Names that are also places, Valpo places. Guild, Memorial, Brandt, Duesenberg. We know them because we lived here and studied here, and played here. Late at night, early in the morning, on a spring weekend, under a foot of lake effect snow. The names echo across years, decades, centuries, even if their bricks and mortar no longer stand. Hughley, Mollering, Kinsey. Their names echo with light ever brighter into the future. Their names echo the light. In thy light we see light. And we hear their pulse, the spirit pulsing with light, like light through tall stained glass spilling on stone, red and green and yellow and blue, spilling a marble table with the color of light, a plate broken with bread, a cup brimming with wine. The names walk an aisle of a chapel called Resurrection on a weekend called Homecoming. They sing, oh how they sing, of ages past. Time, like an ever-rolling stream, soon bears us all away. These names they sing, and we hear them. Voices from a past that has become our past, a passion that has become our purpose. Because the name is also a place, a place where Athens meets Jerusalem, a place called the Vale of Paradise, this place called Valparaiso. I never met O.P. Kretzman face to face. I never heard him speak out loud. But I hear his voice echo through the years. I hear his words hallow these halls. Even in a climate of peril and war, the university must continue its twofold task. The search for truth and the transmission of truth, free and unbroken. And little did we know that when we first signed that honor code, an honor would be given to us, much larger and much higher than those 15 words. The honor of truth given and received and shared, free and unbroken. The honor of truth that sets us free, science with wisdom, knowledge with understanding, freedom with faith. This is the lifelong honor code of which we sing. Hail to the brown and gold, we pledge thee to uphold, wherever we may be, thy honored name. I never heard him speak, but I hear the the voice of O.P. Kretzmann hallow these halls, and the voices of Schnabel and Hari and Heckler. It is the voice of my favorite professor, how they gave me a lifetime of learning. It is the voices of Songfest and Caroling Night. It is burning midnight oil at the torch, or the beacon, or WVUR. It is the freshman beanies, and the freshman production, seven week rush, and Sunday waffles. It is the victory bell rung at high noon, or the kissing bridge at midnight. It is an oak tree we call Merlin that stands to this day. It is the lifelong honor code of truth, free and unbroken. It is the never ending flame of a torch in the night, the fire at the entrance that welcomes us back to this place, this Valparaiso, this fire in our hearts that pushes us to see thy future light. Into the Valpo Experience here on VU TV. I'm Brendan Johnson. And I'm Amy Vander Hayden. And with us right now, we are joining us Valpo alum from 2005. Yes, that is correct. Michael Brennan. Destiny joining us in the studio. It is great to be here with you guys. Yeah, Working you. with professionals like yourself. <laughs> Look at you. This is this place is amazing. It's grown so much since I left here 10 years ago. The best things happened the minute I left. Yeah, right. Uh, and I heard that you are up to some interesting things. Tell us a little bit about it. I am. Well, you know, it's been a very eventful 10 years. I've uh, most importantly, I've got uh, I've got two little girls. I got my wife, uh, another VU grad, so life is good. Uh, since I left here, I've uh, hosted a few shows, written a couple of books. But one thing I'm very excited to mention is that I've actually, and most people don't know this, I've been working as a Hollywood film agent uh, since leaving here. And I have one client, and that one client is former Valparaiso University president, Dr. Alan Hari. Did you know that? You know he's in the film industry now? I did it. And uh, we just signed him to a four-picture deal. I'm so excited because I'm able to announce here on the air today the four films the President Hari is going to be. And are you ready? Can I can I share this? Go for it. Okay, the first one. This is great. This is going to be. This has got blockbuster written all over it, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Harry Potter. 
Harry Potter. This is going to be, this is coming out. This is, this is some of his finest work. This is amazing. What would a film career be without a good romantic comedy? Of course. Uh, you have to have a good romantic comedy. When Harry Met Sally, this is, this is also in the works. A good family film, appropriate for all ages. This one I'm going to bring my girls to. This is Harry and the Hendersons. And then, last but not least, I'm telling you, President Harry, future action film star, ladies and gentlemen, he has remade the Clint Eastwood classic, Dirty Harry. Oh. Dirty <laughs> Harry. So these films will be out in the fall of never. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to be sending you out to, uh, I believe, Christ College soon, aren't we? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm very excited. Heading out on that golf yes. cart across campus. So before we let you go, though, how does it feel? You, we mentioned a little earlier, but how does it feel to be back on campus here for Valpo Day of Giving? Um, you know, I always make jokes, but I loved my time at the university so much. I love Valpo. I'm proud of it for more reasons than I can express in the short amount of time that I have. But uh, it's been a tremendous experience. And any chance to give back, I'm happy to, because Valpo shaped who I am personally and professionally. And I get to work with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Can I be like the third guy on the team? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, but thanks. we're going to head uh, to a couple videos about sure. Christ College, and we'll see a lot more from Michael uh, in the next coming hours. And we're going to actually send him to Christ College right now. To the golf cart. Exactly. Batman. Robin, yes. let's go. Yes. <laughs> My love for Christ College stems from this fact that I'm not just learning really, you know, intellectual skills, but it's also a development of me as a person. It's here that I've found my vocation. I came to Valpo wanting to be a nurse, and Christ College has taken it beyond simple nursing. So Christ College is an interdisciplinary liberal arts honors college, and that means that our students are pursuing majors at all the other four colleges on campus, uh, business, engineering, nursing, arts and sciences, and I come into a CC class and there's a guy who's a Theo major, there's a woman who's an accounting major, and we're talking about human dignity, and we're coming at it from really different perspectives. Like, huh, that's something I don't get anywhere else on campus except for Christ College. It's this sort of back and forth discussion. The faculty here at Christ College guide us in the right direction as to where the conversation needs to go, but they let it go where it does, and we decide that. We always start our classes with a text or a selection of texts, and we think carefully together about what those texts are saying. In thinking about the text in the freshman program, you are going to have to deal with the fact that you don't quite understand it, and that that's okay. But sometimes you'll be in class, you're reading a text, and it's like a little flame lights up inside you, and all of a sudden something comes alive. You see yourself in the pages of what you're reading. The faculty here at Christ College put the students first. Before they ever insert their opinion, they really want to hear what we have to say. I appreciate that the faculty here, they are living what they're teaching, and they're thinking through these questions about what it means to be human in the same way that we are. And they're also not afraid to be humble when they don't know, and then to seek out an answer and to explore with you instead of teaching at you. One of the distinctive things about Christ College is the freshman production. So the freshman class every fall, in 10 weeks, they put together this remarkable uh, musical. They write it, they score it, they perform in it, uh, they do all the work. You get to see the students' talents showcased in ways that you can't see in the classroom. And I really like the fireside symposia because you're able to hear a lot from professors and interesting work that they're doing. The Oxford debates are when you get put into debate teams as freshmen. I was on the debate team talking about fracking. So a lot of it is difficult topics that are actually relevant in the country at that point in time. Our graduates go on to pursue careers that are really diverse. We have students going into top-ranked PhD programs in medical and dental fields. We have students working as financial analysts, working in the film industry, students serving as missionaries and in volunteer organizations. I graduated from Christ College in 1991, and Christ College shaped me in that I wanted to be at a place like this. I knew I wanted to form relationships with my students rather than being the expert in the room or a content provider. 95% of Christ College students graduate cum laude with honors or, or above. I feel 
prepared. I know that I'm gonna be a nurse who's able to take in everything around me and then integrate a much better practice of care for my patients. Learning about Christ College and coming here as a freshman was really the highlight of my college experience. I believe I'm more prepared than a lot of my peers because of Christ College, which I think is obviously it's gonna give but I think of, you know, when I think of success that I gain from Christ College, it's more from personal development, it's more from spiritual development, becoming a whole person. That is really what's going to affect me as I go out into the world. Christ College students are passionate. Christ College students are compassionate. I think CC students are remarkably caring. I see them looking out for one another all the time in some really surprising and uncommon ways. In a few words, my Christ College peers are supportive. They're engaged. They are excited about life. Christ College students are a family. One of my favorite Christ College traditions is the CC picnic. Uh, right in front of Muller Hall on the lawn. It's the beginning of the year. Everybody's coming back. You get to see old friends. You get to meet new members of Christ College. I mean, we had a tug of war with the faculty, and you feel like you're surrounded by your family at a barbecue. One of the distinctive things about Christ College is the freshman production. So the freshman class, every fall, in 10 weeks, they put together this remarkable um, musical write it, they score it, they perform in it, uh, they do all the work. You get to see the students' talents showcased in ways that you can't see in the classroom. And I really like the fireside symposia because you're able to hear a lot from professors and the interesting work that they're doing. The Oxford debates are when you get put into debate teams as freshmen. I was on the debate team talking about fracking, but at the end of the day, it's really a bonding experience between you and your classmates and getting to know the different people that you're surrounded with and who are so incredibly talented. And welcome back to the Valpo Day of Giving. We're tuning into the Valpo Experience here on VU TV. I'm Brendan Johnson. And I'm Amy Vander Hayden. And we are talking this half hour about Christ College, Valpo, Valparaiso University's Honors College, kind of one of the uh, more significant honors programs is because it's not a program. It's actually a college here at the university. It's kind of distinct in that way. Of course, and one of the trademarks, of course, of Valparaiso University. So we actually spoke with the dean of the Christ College, Peter Canellos. So we'll have that interview for you now, talking in depth even more about the Christ College program that we have here at Valparaiso University. I'm proud to be Valpo because I am a, a citizen of Valparaiso University by choice. I have uh, this is my third year here, and I had been uh, working at other universities, uh, wonderful universities, places that I uh, was very happy to be and comfortable to be. And, uh, and then this opportunity was made um, uh, evident to me by a mentor of mine, somebody that I had uh, studied with in my PhD program who knows Valpo very well, um, and thought that, you know, the sort of, the sort of person that I had become in my academic career and the sort of person that would fit in well at Valparaiso University were um, things that were coming together. And so uh, I, I took a risk and left a tenured position at a wonderful university to join this community because I believe in what this community stands for. I believe in, um, in the, the model of uh, faith-based higher education that the university provides. I, believe in the student body that's here. I, uh, they're a wonderful group of young people. They're earnest, they're hardworking, they're, they're deep, they're curious. Um, their, their values are tremendous and, uh, and uh, sad to say that's not universal in our world today. To find such a wonderful collection of people um, to be associated with. Um, I'm proud because the faculty are just wonderful here. I've, never seen faculty who are so committed to the classroom and committed to students and who put in the extra effort and who go the extra mile and and who um, who balance you know these they their uh, their professional obligations they still publish and they still go to conferences and they stay on top of their field and they do that 
uh, very gracefully while remaining dedicated teachers, and, and neither of those things suffer. Um, so it's just a, it's a wonderful place because it's filled with wonderful people, but also because it, you know, the ethos of the university, I think, is really what is the foundation of everything else. I think a university that's committed to, to values, committed to um, the human person, committed to um, the, the role that faith-based institutions have to play in our society, uh, these, you know, the, it, it's rare to find such a conjunction of these wonderful things. And so, like I said, I, I chose to come here, and uh, it's one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. So the gifts that will come to us through the Day of Giving um, will impact uh, the life of Christ College tremendously. Um, one of the things that we are committed to in Christ College is developing the whole person, the whole student. And so we have... Um, tremendous academic resources. We have wonderful faculty, we have an innovative curriculum, we have eager, earnest students who bring everything every day to class. Um, but what we need in addition to that are the, the community resources that shape Christ College into a whole community because we believe very strongly in Christ College that learning doesn't take place in isolation but it takes place as part of a learning community. And so the gifts that we get through um, the giving from our alumni and from our, our benefactors and friends allow us to put on a whole host of uh, co-curricular activities. Um, one of the most important of those is our freshman production. Uh, every fall the freshmen arrive and they're given the bad news. They have 10 weeks to come up with a 90 minute long musical theatrical production from scratch. They write the music, they write the script, They they paint sets, they do the uh, lighting, they do choreography in that, and that is something that we just couldn't carry on without the support um, of our alumni through things like the Day of Giving, because we bring in to facilitate that a professional theater director who works with them over the course of the semester, um, who helps them shape this project. Uh, and so, you know, without that kind of guidance, we couldn't carry that on. Similarly, we have for freshmen our Oxford debates, um, which happen in the fall. Uh, we've just concluded them. Or actually, we have one more tonight. Uh, sorry, uh, we, we're about to conclude them. And um, those are uh, similarly thing, uh, debates that the students prepare for all semester long. They, they're divided into teams, and they have, we have four separate debate topics, a team on each side of those topics. And the students learn how to um, how to do research. They learn forensic skills. They think about public presentation. They build teams and that. And we need a professional debate coach to come in and teach them how to approach uh, an Oxford-style debate. And so our, our resources that come from our alumni help support that as well. We have um, many things throughout the year. We have our weekly symposium. Um, based on an annual theme. So every Thursday evening in Christ College, there's a, a serious discussion about an important topic. Uh, this year's theme is, what is justice? Um, and so, you know, we have uh, the, 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 the gifts that are made to, to Christ College enable us to bring in just fantastic um, people to speak on this topic. Uh, this current year, we were able to bring in a novelist, um, we brought in a poet, we've brought in philosophers, we've brought in literary scholars, we brought in um, the woman who is the CEO of Catholic World Relief this year to talk about justice and international humanitarianism. Um, in the past, we've brought in the, the composer in residence from the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, we've brought in uh, a woman who's won the Pulitzer Prize, we've brought in theologians. Um, and, you know, having this continual presence of internationally renowned people come to our college to discuss in a very intimate setting. Um, we do this mostly in-house in Christ College in our commons room by the fireplace to discuss uh, the great questions of life. Um, not only teaches our students to think clearly and deeply about things, it connects them to the way that people think outside our university and outside the setting of Valparaiso in ways that I think allow them to look forward to um, ways that they might contribute to the world in the future. 
Uh, so that weekly symposium is, again, something that we just wouldn't have if we didn't have the support of our alumni. Uh, we have a Christmas uh, banquet every year, and this is a, a big, it's our Christmas symposium banquet. It's a big community building thing for us. The entire um, faculty and student body get together, and the students put on skits roasting the faculty and the administrators, and then we get our chance to do that in return. The faculty put on a skit, and and the dean has to stand up uh, all by himself and, and do something in front of the collected community. It was the most intimidating thing I had to do um, since I've been here, and I do this every year. Um, but that banquet, again, is, is sponsored by our alumni um, giving and the giving of our friends and benefactors. And you know, Christ College wouldn't be the same without these traditions, without these events. We're inaugurating this year um, something we're calling Sophomores in the City. We're taking all our sophomores uh, into Chicago to see a play at the Looking Glass Theater. Um, and we're going to do this annually so that we provide for them a, an urban experience and a cultural experience in Chicago so that they become connected to the broader cultural landscape and so they continue a kind of ongoing relationship with the city that we try to promote. Um, so there, there are many other things I can mention, but the, the life of Christ College, um, you know, I, I, I've said this many times, and I'll say it here, uh, you know, I often feel that I'm not the dean of an honors college, I'm the headmaster of Hogwarts, uh, because we have so much that goes on that builds our sense of who we are and our team building, community building, and our traditions in that, and that really, um, provides for a very rich and thick experience for our students. And that in conjunction with the, with the tremendous academic opportunities they have um, is really what an honors college should be about. They're wonderful and supportive and, uh, and, and truly um, committed to the life of the college in a way that I haven't seen at any other institution. I, uh, I've only been here three years. Um, and I've come from, uh, I've had experience at several other institutions, um, and I, from the moment I got here, I felt myself sort of enveloped in the life of Christ College, not just the current students and current faculty, but the, all those who have come before. It's a place of traditions, it's a place of um, a, a deep and abiding community, and uh, you know, I meet alumni all the time um, in different circumstances, and they always reflect fondly on their experience in Christ College, and they support it. In fact, virtually every alum I've ever met has pulled me aside, and the very first thing they want to discuss was how great their freshman production was when they were freshmen, even when it was 40-some years ago. Um, but that sense of connectedness to Christ College and seeing the the impact that Christ College has had on their life and their whole Valpo experience um, is something that just seems appreciated by our alumni and something that they help us in, in terms of preserving by giving back. And now we are going to send it out to Michael Essany, who has sprinted across campus and is now at the Christ College for a live tour with Bryn Cooley to give us a behind the scenes look at the Christ College. So we're going to send it off to Michael. Michael, are you there? Okay, hi, thank you. Good to be back here. We are at Christ College, and I am here at this time with Bryn Cooley, who is a senior at Christ College here at Valparaiso University, and also a member of the Student Advisory Council. Bryn, how are you today? I'm doing great. There's some nice weather outside, so I'm pretty happy today. Any it, sun is very good. It is, especially after the week we just, we just <laughs> had. So, you know, we're at Mueller Hall, and this is actually where I had my first class as a, as a student and also my, my last and I have not been here in 10 years so I'm excited that you're my tour guide absolutely today. tell us where we are what's changed what's new what's amazing yeah so right now we're actually in the Christ College Commons this is where students will come to you know do some homework hang out with each other we've actually got a puzzle over there that people can use to uh, you know blow off some steam a little bit do a little bit of thinking um, and over here we have our famous egg chair that's really just comfortable to yeah, sit the in. Chair, the epic egg chair is still here. I remember this has been here since I remember. Oh yeah. It's a Christ College legend. And, and the legend has carried on into apparel because you have the, the egg on your shirt. Look at this. This is I want to pick that up at the, at the university. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're quite exclusive. So. Oh, they are? Okay, oh, yes. Okay. So we're actually going to head out into the hallway next. We're going to go see where some of the professors hang out. Oh, wonderful. Let's go bother some professors. 
that's actually one of my favorite pastimes. Is it really? I I'm do. Sorry, we have a lot in common. I yeah, <laughs> I stop ago. into the professor's offices all the time. <laughs> they're actually super great about talking to any student who's around, and they're really available for anyone who wants to talk about not even really school things, but life, which is really great. It's a good sense of community. So every professor who uh, is a Christ College professor has an office along this hall. Um, we don't actually call it Professor's Hall, but I kind of feel like we should. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Great. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be anyone. No, they actually right just uh, finished a Christ College freshman program class, which mean, means that a lot of these guys um, are actually in class right now. Ah. So. All righty. Okay, so we're going to go downstairs? We're, no, we're, we're just going to head down this way. This so um, down this direction, we have a couple of really great Christ College rooms that are actually in the middle of the building. So like I said, we have the commons, which is actually right along this wall here. And just past the commons, we have what we call the courtyard. It's an outdoor space right in the middle of the building. And uh, we can actually see it through here. Uh, there we go. It's nice and sunny. Beautiful. Look at this. So these, this is the courtyard out here. Um, sometimes when the weather's nice like it is today, we can actually have class out here. There's a couple fountains that, you know, show up when the weather's nice and the water's not going to freeze. Um, so it's a really great space to also do your homework and hang out outside when, you know, like I said, the weather's nice enough to do so. Going down this way, we also have what is called the refectory. So that's right in here. Oh, that one's locked. There we go. Hold the door. Yep. So in here is the refectory. This is where we hold a lot of our uh, Christ College community events. So right now it's set up to watch a movie on our big screen over there. We also hold um, our typical freshman year events in here. So the freshman production where the students put on a 90-minute musical happens in this room, as well as the freshman debates. We have a nice long table set up for uh, all the freshmen to talk about some real-life controversial issues in the country today. That's what happens in here. We also have uh, plenary speakers in here. Sometimes we have a um, symposium schedule. We have symposiums every Thursday night. Sometimes they're in the commons and by the fireplace. Other times they're in here um, and more formal. And sometimes we even hold them in the Duesenberg Recital Hall. So this is still a hub for a lot of activity. Yeah. A lot, a lot is happening here. Okay. Yeah. So that that has not changed. Nope, not at all. So it sounds like even more so. Where do we go now? The next part is actually the new part that you get to see for the oh, first boy. time. Yes. See my two dollars at work. Like, you know, like, I'm excited to see this. Yes. All so right. um, back here used to be what was the kitchen. So Christ College Muller Hall was actually going to have dorms on either side of it. They decided to nix that because they wanted the Christ College to feel like a part of the actual Valparaiso community. So they kept us in the regular res halls. Um, so instead of keeping the kitchen back here, we have decided to revamp into new classroom spaces. So let's head back here. I know we just have about a minute or so before we go back to the studio, so we'll do a quick quick, quick look, look at this. Yeah. So these are the new classrooms. Um, they have wonderful glass walls, so you can see inside them. Um, they have great technology. It's brand new and works a lot better than some of the other stuff we got. So uh, this is our brand new area. It is spectacular, absolutely spectacular. I want to ask Brent before we go. Why are you proud to be Valpo? I am proud to be Valpo because the community here is absolutely unparalleled, and it's something that I'm searching for in uh, my postgraduate career, and uh, I'm coming to find that it's quite a unique quality here. It is indeed. It was a pleasure meeting you. You as well. Speaking of unparalleled, let's go back to our unparalleled anchor team <laughs> at the studio. All right, welcome back inside the studio. We're going to head to break in just a little bit, but we want to give you an update what's happening on Twitter. Obviously, you can see right below us right here, we're seeing your tweets coming in. If you tweet at ValpoU and hashtag Valpo Day. And right now in Chicago, hashtag Valpo Day trending number five in Chicago. So wow. really great, 49th in the nation as well. Yes, 27,000 Twitter impressions have been made for the entire university across Twitter. Um, so thank you all for your encouragement, your support today. Um, we're really happy to be here. It's just really exciting. Um, this is just kind of a whole different direction that uh, VU TV's moved in, and then obviously the university. Uh, we just really want to show you guys what it's like to be a Valpo student. We're so proud to be here. Exactly, and we're going to head to break right now, but we'll be back with more. Michael Essany will be back after this break as well, so stay tuned and tune in to the Valpo experience right here on Valpo Day of Giving. It lives deep in your soul, driving everything you do. It's what wakes you up early and keeps you up late. It's already inside you, where it's always been. Waiting to be developed, informed, 
train. The way you see the world is powerful, but the way you will lead and transform it is what we're all waiting for. Valparaiso University, where passion meets purpose. Dow, Kreinheider, Gellerson, Werenberg, these are names, Valpo names, names that span generations, names that are also places, Valpo places. Guild, Memorial, Brandt, Duesenberg. We know them because we lived here, and studied here, and played here. Late at night, early in the morning, on a spring weekend, under a foot of lake effect snow. The names echo across years, decades, centuries, even if their bricks and mortar no longer stand. Hughley, Mollering, Kinsey. Their names echo with light ever brighter into the future. Their names echo the light. In thy light we see light. And we hear their pulse, the spirit pulsing with light, like light through tall stained glass spilling on stone, red and green and yellow and blue, spilling a marble table with the color of light, a plate broken with bread, a cup brimming with wine. The names walk an aisle of a chapel called Resurrection on a weekend called Homecoming. They sing, oh how they sing, of ages past. Time, like an ever rolling stream, soon bears us all away. These names they sing and we hear them, Voices from a past that has become our past, a passion that has become our purpose. Because the name is also a place, a place where Athens meets Jerusalem, a place called the Vale of Paradise, this place called Valparaiso. I never met O.P. Kretzman face to face. I never heard him speak out loud, but I hear his voice echo through the years. I hear his words hallow these halls. Even in a climate and war. The university must continue its twofold task. The search for truth and the transmission of truth, free and unbroken. And little did we know that when we first signed that honor code, an honor would be given to us, much larger and much higher than those 15 words. The honor of truth, given and received and shared, free and unbroken. The honor of truth that sets us free. Science with wisdom, knowledge with understanding, freedom with faith. This is the lifelong honor code of which we sing. Hail to the brown and gold, we pledge thee to uphold. Wherever we may be, thy honored name. I never heard him speak, but I hear the voice of O.P. Kretzmann hallow these halls, and the voices of Schnabel and Hari and Heckler. It is the voice of my favorite professor, how they gave me a lifetime of learning. It is the voices of Songfest and Caroling Night. It is burning midnight oil at the torch, or the beacon, or WVUR. It is the freshman beanies and the freshman production, seven week rush and Sunday waffles. 
It is the victory bell rung at high noon. Or the kissing bridge at midnight. It is an oak tree we call Merlin that stands to this day. It is the lifelong honor code of truth, free and unbroken. It is the never-ending flame of a torch in the night, the fire at the entrance that welcomes us back to this place, this Valparaiso, this fire in our hearts that pushes us to see thy future light. And welcome back to the Valpo Day of Giving. We are tuning into the Valpo Day, or Valpo Experience rather, here on VU TV. I'm Brendan Johnson. And I'm Amy Vander Hayden. And we're going to be talking right now about the central hub of Valparaiso University. It's right in the center. It's the Hare Union, right across the street from the Chapel of the Resurrection. Um, and this building kind of serves, you know, that's kind of where everybody goes to eat. It's where we go to socialize. It's where we hold a lot of major functions here on campus with the ballrooms and whatnot. Uh, VU TV's very own Matthew Stoughton actually works as a welcome desk attendant and in the games room there and actually has a bit of a walkthrough tour for us. Hi, my name is Matt Stoughton. I work at the welcome desk of the Hare Union and actually today I'm going to take you on a behind-the-scenes look at what all happens in the Student Union. So now that we are inside the Union, this building has over 202,000 square feet. We have a lot of tenants, we have a lot of meeting spaces for organizations and students to have their meetings across campus and to hold activities throughout the year. We've got two tenants here on the first floor towards the entrance. First of all, over here we have the Career Center. Over in the Career Center, uh, a lot of people here come to do their resumes and also get any advice to help them get jobs and any other things that can help you after you graduate. Next to the Career Center over here, we have the Union Admin Administration. And this is kind of where the union operates, is the headquarters of our professional staff. Now a little bit further into the main lobby, we have the welcome desk. If you have any questions or need advice or any directions here on campus, this is the place you want to go. Now our on-campus bookstore is located also here on the first level of the Hari Union. It's where you can get your books or any Valpo apparel for the year. Here in the Union, we have two different dining options. Number one, we have the Campus Cafe, which is located right behind me. They have grab-and-go items, hot food, and also a convenience store in the back. After you get a snack from the cafe, you can stop here in the games area where you can play different games. You can rent pool tables, pool sticks. You can also do ping pong or any other activities. We also have some rental equipment that you can use outside the university like basketballs, volleyballs, anything like the sort. All mail services across campus are centralized here in the Hari Union. Now here on the opposite side of the Union, we have Founders, which is our cafeteria-style dining. Many of our meeting spaces available for reservation are upstairs. The windows around the building also let in a lot of natural light and we get a very nice view of the chapel. The ballrooms are especially nice for large events and fairs. The study abroad office and office of multicultural programs are up here along with the student org suite headquarters to many of our student-run organizations. Well, this has been a behind-the-scenes look at what happens here in the Hari Union. On behalf of myself and the Welcome Desk, thanks for joining me and have a happy Valpo Day.
And now that you've seen a look behind the scenes at the horror union, we're going to send it to Michael Essany, who's going to have some interviews and talking to some of the most important and influential people that work every day, day in and day out in the Hare Union. Yeah. Uh, so while we're waiting for him right now, uh, we just want to kind of recap some of the things that have happened thus far today. Uh, we are trending right now, from what we've been told, number five in the Chicago area, 27,000 Twitter impressions. Um, and so we want to thank all of you guys for your encouragement, your support today. And I know a lot of that's happening right now at the union, because we're, you know, talking on that, uh, with the Donor Thankathon. we got a lot of people down in the union for that. Exactly. Make sure to go to the Donor Thankathon as well. Mm -hmm. so they've, this first year they've combined both Valpo Day of Giving and the Donor Thankathon into one day. And you can go in the Hare Union right by the Chapel View Lounge from 9 to 5 today. And then they're also there tomorrow. You can sign some thank you letters, sending it to all the donors that we've seen from the donors from today, from donors who donate all year round mm -hmm. to give to the students of Valparaiso University. And they're open, like I said, from 9 to 5 today and also tomorrow. And if you go, there's some free candy, get a free t-shirt. You've probably seen a bunch of people walking around with those t-shirts saying, I can't even thank you enough. <laughs> and so, of course, get a t-shirt. We've got everybody in behind the scenes here in VU TV yeah. wearing those shirts as well. So if you see anyone wearing that shirt, you know exactly where it came from, from the Donor Thankathon and from Valpo Day of Giving. Absolutely. And, you know, since we are on the topic of the union, there's a lot that happens in, you know, the Central Hub of Campus. We've got dining services, the Career Center, the ballrooms, the Student Organization Suite, which houses a lot of the student orgs here on campus, which we have an entire half hour dedicated to later, including Student Senate. Uh, we have the Student Affairs Suite, which houses Greek life and the Office of Residential Life. So a lot goes on uh, in the union, uh, you know, on a typical day here at Valpo. And of course, one interview that we're not going to have up in this upcoming little bit with Michael Essany in just a minute, but we're going to have later on tonight, is Marianne and Gail, some of our two favorite lunch ladies. Absolutely. But I'm hearing now that they are ready to go from the union. So we're going to send it now to Michael Essany, excuse me, from the Hari Union with some interviews from those Hari Union staff members. It lives deep in your soul, driving everything you do. It's what wakes you up early and keeps you up late. It's already inside you, where it's always been. Waiting to be developed, informed, trained. The way you see the world is powerful, but the way you will lead and transform it is what we're all waiting for. Valparaiso University, where passion meets purpose. Valpo Day of Giving. We're tuning into the Valpo Experience here on VU TV. I'm Brendan Johnson. And I'm Amy Vander Hayden. Uh, we were going to throw out to Michael Essany and the Hari Union. We're resetting our live view system right now, so we ran into a little bit of a bump in the road. We're live TV, 12 hour telethon, though, here on VU TV. We're making television history here at Valpo, so we're really excited. 
Uh, we've got a lot of great folks who are working behind the scenes really hard. Um, and this is a kind of a giant, huge learning experience for everybody here today. It's kind of really cool. Exactly. And of course, something can always go wrong with live view and True. with live broadcast anytime, anywhere. So luckily, we do have a lot planned for you guys. So we're actually going to send it now over to the weather desk and my, or excuse me, Adam Sherwinski, who will give you the weather forecast for this hour. Adam? Hey, thanks guys. If you're currently out and about here in Valparaiso, 43 degrees for your uh, temperature right now. North, northwest winds at 9 miles per hour. It's a beautiful day. So if you're out and about, hey, take advantage of it because it's going to stay around for a while. All right, look at this across the country. We've got high pressure building in to our area of the country. St. Louis, Chicago, beautiful skies. If you're anywhere else in the country, you might run into some clouds or even some snow showers like up in Minneapolis. Closer to Lake Michigan here at home, we've got Valparaiso, beautiful skies, Milwaukee to Kalamazoo. It's just looking great here around Lake Michigan. All right, temperatures is going to be a big talk here for our next for or for our forecast. So 40 degrees later today here in Valparaiso. We're going to get pretty chilly overnight. Look, notice near the lake. Look how cool it is compared to everywhere else. 47 in Ottawa, 58 in Pontiac. Tuesday, uh, 7, or actually, I take that back. 7, uh, 10 tonight, later tonight this evening. All right, 45 tomorrow, early in the morning, as you're getting ready for your classes. And then lo look, notice near the lake. You can see that you got a little bit of that blue still there. It's going to be cooler near the lake, but everywhere else around here, even around Valparaiso, Joliet, Ottawa, it's going to warm up pretty quick. Back again to the 30s and 40s for us overnight. And then Thursday, look at that, 61 degrees in Valparaiso, 63 in Kankakee, 62 in Wheatfield, 64 in Ottawa. Hey, I'll take those over snow any day of the week. All right, here, looking at our future radar, look how beautiful that is, everybody. Look at that. And to be honest, we've got nothing really of consequence to talk about. Look at that, just a few clouds rolling in, nothing serious. Most of the snow showers and rain are going to stay up to our north for us here in Valparaiso. Just take that in, just how beautiful it's going to be. 45 degrees in Valparaiso for the rest of the day today. Cool, clear skies and a little bit cool, but tonight, 31 degrees, mostly clear skies and winds at northeast at a couple miles per hour. It's going to be pretty nice, so if you take out a jacket, just take a jacket if you're going to go out and have classes. Tomorrow, however, 57 degrees, sunny skies, a lot nicer than today, even though today's going to be pretty nice. And then, hey, look at our seven-day forecast as it comes out. Look at all of these temperatures that are going to pop up. 58 degrees, 63, 69, 70. So as you're going on through the week, it's just going to get better and better and better. However, on Monday and Tuesday, our next chance for rain and some clouds. But overall, it's going to be pretty great. It's already looking great today here in Valparaiso, if you haven't noticed. But it's going to be pretty nice. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Valpo day, everybody. Taking those temperatures real quick, just look at that and how great it's going to be for the rest of your week as this beautiful day bleeds in to the next one. You guys, back to you. Of course, a beautiful day outside. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of rain, but it's like the weather new. Today's Valpo Day. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we were out a little bit earlier. I actually have uh, Facebook Live going on our VU TV Facebook page. So if you are watching us on the mini site right now and you are an alum of VU TV, come and interact with us. Come and engage with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but yeah, just a, overall, it's just a great day here in Valparaiso. It's kind of really special. And of course, still a lot planned for today. Of course, we'll be looking at the rest of the colleges and programs that we have. We still have College of Arts and Sciences. We still have College of Nursing coming up. Of course, VU TV will have our shield at 5 o'clock. And at 4.30, we'll actually have a behind-the-scenes look at the shield. If you don't, if you're familiar with the shield, that is our flagship news program here that we have at VU TV that we put on every single Monday. So we've actually moved it to Tuesday just for you guys yes. to yes. take a look at what we guys, that what our entire staff does every week for the news. Of course, bringing you Valpo news, weather, and sports. So a lot coming up in that. And then we'll have later on, uh, we'll have the student orgs. We'll actually have at 6.30, the student senate presidential election between Nurozaki and Ben Tiemann, so we'll have that as well. But we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be ready to send it back out to Michael Essany from the Union. So stay with us right here on VUTV and tune in to the Valpo Experience. <laughs> 